as far as the act of masturbation is concerned the scholars in Islam there are different opinions but the majority of the scholars they say that masturbation in Islam is haram even though majority of the scholars say haram there is a large number which also say that it is makru and there is another large number of scholars who say that it is mubah it is optional so I would like to say at the outset that majority of the scholars in terms of percentage majority they say that it is haram but a large number they may not be majority but the number is huge a large number of scholars they also say it is makru it is discouraged and another large number though not in majority they also say that it is moba and we'll discuss this issue today and i'll let you know that which group of scholars do i agree with towards the end <coughs> as far <coughs> as far as the shafi group of scholars the jurist the fuqaha amongst the shafi and the maliki almost all of them they say that masturbation is haram and according to imam ashafi may allah have mercy on him he says it is haram and he quotes the verse of the quran from surah al mu'minun chapter number 23 verse number 5 6 and 7 if you read Surah Mu'minun chapter number 23 verse number 1 onward it says that believers will eventually be successful verse number 2 says those who humble themselves in prayers verse number 3 says those who avoid vain talks verse number 4 says that those who do acts deeds who do acts and deeds of charity verse number 5 says those who guard their private parts or those who abstain from sex verse number 6 says except those who they have married that is their spouses that is their wives and those would which those which their right hand possesses for them there is an exception and verse number 7 says that all those who cross these limits they are transgressors so here the Quran says in Surah Mu'minun chapter number 23 verse number 5, 6 and 7 that the moments are those who guard their private parts. Abstain from illicit sex except from the spouses and what their right hand possesses. That's an exception and all those who cross these limits they are transgressors. So based on this verse of the Quran Imam Shafi Allah will be with him. He says that here the verse is very clear cut that sex you can only have with your spouse and what your right hand possesses and everything else is prohibited now this verse of the glorious Quran can be interpreted in two ways the first group of scholars they understand this verse as here guarding your private part in Arabic it means that all types of sexual pressures all types of sexual pleasure that means all types of sexual pleasures for a moment is only permitted with your wife and what your right hand possesses that is the slave girl and now the slave woman has been abolished so now it is restricted to only your wives so based on this verse if all sexual pleasure is only permitted with your wife then even masturbation is haram Masturbation is stimulation of your organ and most of the time it is self-stimulation of your private part such that there is, such that there is ejaculation or there is orgasm. But the other group of scholars say that this verse guard your private part it only restricted to sexual intercourse. So the verse of the Quran actually means that you can have sexual intercourse only with your wife and what your right hand possesses. Other than sexual intercourse, this verse doesn't refer to other things. So if you agree with the second group of scholars, then masturbation doesn't fall under this verse of the Quran. That is the reason the scholars are divided. But if you literally 
know the verse of the Quran, the meaning, it says, guard your private part. So, but naturally, there is no explicit verse in the Quran which says that masturbation is prohibited. And what we realize from this verse, it means sexual intercourse. And there are various other verses which has prohibited sexual intercourse with people outside the marital bonds or if they are not what your right hand possesses, if they are not your slave woman. As Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 32, come not close to adultery, zina, or fornication, for it is an evil opening other roots to evil. So based on this verse of the Quran, the other group of scholars, they say that this verse specifically refers to sexual intercourse. That means sexual intercourse is only permitted with your wife and with what your right hand possesses. Otherwise, it doesn't mean other things. So if you agree the meaning of this verse is only restricted to sexual intercourse, then masturbation is not included in this verse. So that's the reason scholars differ. And according to Ibn Hazm, he says that our beloved Prophet has permitted a person to touch his private part. And the hadith, it says touch with your left hand, no problem. It is your organ you can touch. He also says that it is your fluid, you can emit it if you want. So based on that, he says when the Prophet has permitted to touch your private organ, and that is what you do in masturbation, it is self-stimulation. So surely it is permitted. And masturbation is of two types. One is the self-stimulation. The other type of masturbation is your spouse or your sexual partner is stimulating you. And no scholar ever says that your wife or your spouse is not permitted to touch your private part. So based on this, surely the other type of masturbation where your spouse touches is permitted. So when you can enjoy with your spouse touching your private part, then why can't you do it yourself? So based on this, the second group of scholar, which is lesser in number, they say that this verse does not include masturbation at all. It is just talking about sexual intercourse. So sexual intercourse is only permitted with your wife, with your spouse, and with what your right hand possesses. It doesn't include masturbation. So that's how the scholars differ. There is another argument given by the first group of scholars who say that masturbation is prohibited. And they quote the verse, they quote the hadith of our beloved Prophet Muhammad which is mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 7, hadith number 5066, in which our beloved Prophet Muhammad said that, O oh, young people, whoever has the means to get married, they should get married. For it will help you to lower your gaze and guard your modesty, guard your private parts. And it continues, those who cannot marry, they should fast, for it will reduce your sexual desire. So here, the first group of scholars, they say, see here the Prophet said, if you cannot marry, you should fast. The Prophet did not say masturbation. That's the reason masturbation is haram. Now this logic, to say that just because the Prophet did not say masturbate doesn't make masturbation haram. Yes, what we have to understand from this hadith that the young people should marry if they can. If they can marry, they should fast. That means fasting is mustahab. Nowhere does it mean that masturbation is haram because it's not mentioned as haram. Suppose if I say that eat date, it's good for nourishment and for energy. And if the Prophet says eat date, that does not mean eating mango is haram. It means eating date is good in mustab. The other fruits become moba. So it is wrong to conclude from this hadith of Sai Bukhari that masturbation is haram. It is wrong logic. Because for haram, there should be strong evidence from the Quran or from Sai Hadith. So based on this, the second group of scholars who say it is not haram, they say there is no text at all anywhere in the Quran. This is the only verse with the scholars quote of Surah Mu'minun, chapter number 23, verse number 5 to 7, which they say it doesn't include masturbation. There's no clear-cut evidence. It only speaks about sexual intercourse. And there's no say hadith prohibiting masturbation. There are some daif and maudu hadith which say masturbation is not prohibited, but that is not good enough for evidence. So we come to the second group of scholars and we'll discuss what they say. They believe that masturbation is makhru. Amongst them is Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, who was the companion of the Prophet. 
there is a person who comes to him and says that I have been masturbating. He says that masturbation is better than fornication. Marriage is better than masturbation. That means the call, the verdict of Ibn Abbas, may Allah be peace with him, who was a close companion of the Prophet Muhammad According to him, marriage is better than masturbation, masturbation is better than fornication. Indirectly, it means that surely masturbation is permitted, but it is makru. The best is marriage. If you cannot marriage, then masturbate because it will prevent you from fornication. So based on this, the second group of scholars who say masturbation is permitted but comes in the makru category is Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal. He is of the opinion that masturbation should not be done, but if you are going to do fornication, then you can do masturbation and he puts it in the makrus, makru category. So the humbly school of thought, most of them, they say that masturbation comes un under the makru category. That means it's discouraged. And this is also said by Mujahid. He says that masturbation is it should be avoided, but if it's done to prevent fornication or zina, it is permitted. This is the view even of Ibn Hazm. That Ibn Hazm says that masturbation is makru, it's discouraged, but if it if it, you're going to involve in fornication, then better do masturbation. It is permitted in such cases. And he says that though masturbation is permitted. It is not amongst the deeds of the noble people. It's not the deeds of nobility. That's for his saying, Ibn Hazm. That means the noble people normally don't do it, so it is discouraged. So that is the reason this group of scholars puts it in the Makru category. There are other, there are many other scholars in this category. Time will not permit to discuss that. The third group of scholars, they put in the Muba categories. The students of Ibn Abbas, some of the students they understood that Ibn Abbas has put masturbation in the makru category and even they say it is makru. But the, but the other group of students of Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, they said that it is mubah, permitted, without any condition. Amongst them, we have Jafar, Jafar bin Zaid. He was a tabayin, may Allah have mercy on him, and he was a student of Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, and his opinion is that masturbation is permitted, there is no harm at all in doing, it is mubah, there is no sin, under normal circumstances is permitted. There is another tabayin by the name of Amr bin Dinar. According to him also, masturbation is permitted, there is no restriction, it comes under the Muba category. If you want to do it, do it. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. It is in the Muba category. Even the famous scholar Ashokani, Imam Ashokani, is very famous. Just 150, 200 years back, he was there. And according to him, also masturbation is Muba. It is permitted, it is optional. If you want to do it, do it. There is no sin. If you don't do it, also, there is no problem. It is under the Muba category. And even according to Bardavi, he says that according to him, masturbation is makru, but depending upon the situation, if it causes you trouble, it, it becomes in the MOBA category. And he also goes on to say that if you fear you will do fornication, masturbation becomes further. That's his opinion. So here you have three groups of scholars. One group which is the majority saying it is haram. Based on the verse of Surah Mu'minun, chapter number 23, verse number 5 and, five and 7, 5 to 7. Whereas the second group of scholars say it is makru, it's discouraged. And the third group say it is mubah, it is permissible, it depends upon you. According to me, I being a medical doctor, that in our medical college when I did my medicine, they used to say that when you ask a person, do you masturbate? 99% will say yes. 
and the remaining 1%, they are lying. Anyway, this is just a joke. It's amongst the medical student. It's not a fact. But according to research, today research tells us that amongst the male, 95% masturbate. Amongst the female, approximately 80% masturbate. I'm not saying that it is normal to masturbate, but it is very common. And there is a myth that which is there if you go to some of the Islamic sites and those who believe it's haram, they say that masturbation causes blindness, masturbation, it causes nervous problem. All these things are a myth. In no way does masturbation cause blindness. In no way does it cause a nervous problem. Yes, if you do excessive masturbation, there can be certain problem that is excessive masturbation. And even medical science tells us, if you do ex excessive sexual intercourse with your wife, maybe 10 times a day, even that will cause problem. So excessive anything or excessive most of the things will cause you problem. But normal masturbation medically doesn't cause any problem. If you do masturbation according to medical science, it is normal. If you don't do also, it is normal. But the majority of the people are involved in masturbation. But I'm not saying it is the norm, but I'm saying that majority people do it. So based on what, what the scholars say and what medical science says, I agree more with the second group of scholars. And I would say that masturbation is makru, it is discouraged. To make anything haram, you require a strong evidence from the Quran or from Sahih Hadith. And there is no evidence whatsoever. The verse of the Quran, I do agree with the second group of scholars. For example, Ahmed ibn Nambal, may Allah be pleased with him. And the other group of scholars, Ibn Abbas, may Allah, uh, may Allah be pleased with him. I believe with Ibn Abbas call that it is not haram. And this verse of Surah Mu'minun, chapter number 23, verse number 5 to 7, does not include masturbation. It's not prohibited. It is restricted to sexual intercourse. And I put it, because there's no evidence, it will either come in the Muba, I put in the Makru because I agree with the call of Ibn Hazm that it is not the act of nobility. It's not the norm, but because majority of human beings are involved in it and there is no evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah to prohibit it, I put in the makru category. Everything the majority do is not correct. For example, today, according to, according to research, 95% of the women in the Western country, before they pass the university, they're involved in zina. That does not make zina halal, not at all. The Quran is very clear cut in Surah Isra chapter 17 verse number 32 that zina is prohibited, it is haram. Majority do doesn't give it a sanction to make it halal. But if there is no text in the Quran or Sai Hadith prohibiting it, it becomes muba. I put it into the makru category for various reasons. One of the reasons is it's not the act of the noble people. Number two, that excessive masturbation is haram. It can cause problems, it can cause health problems, it can cause problems in psychological and most of the time masturbation is associated with haram activities. Most of the time masturbation is associated with pornography, whether you're watching a blue film or a pornographic film or you're watching obscene photographs, images. Here itself, if it's associated with haram activity, that again becomes haram. So if you associate masturbation with pornography or with obscene photographs, it is haram and that is prohibited and it leads to that high chances. That's the reason I would say that best is to avoid. 